Hi, welcome to the Apple II GS. This is going to be a deeply personal let's play of a game that meant a lot to me. From when I was about 8 years old to maybe 13 or so, this was a game that I kept coming back to again and again, and it was just part of my life back then. I somehow haven't really touched it since, and just recently went to the effort of getting it playable again. I have it on original hardware, I had it on an emulator, but both had separate issues and it took a lot of work to get. Uh, I went the emulation route and actually did manage to get this playable. Uh, anyway, this is a bit different from a normal Let's Play, and I haven't even decided yet uh, when and how I'll be publishing it. So if you're seeing this at a weird time, that's why. So goals here. Preservation. Uh, the internet barely seems to know this game exists. So I want to change that in my own little way. And I want to understand why this was so magical to me. Even if through today's lens of game design this might not look like a great experience, it was just perfection as far as I knew back then. And I still think there's a lot of magic in it. So let's learn about that magic. And I want to get an idea of what it takes to make an interesting structured challenge with such limited tools and observe successes and failures in here. So I have lots more to say, but uh, let me give you some idea of what the game actually is before I say all those things. So here's a readme, explorer.docs. GSOS is not a multitasking system, so the finder goes away while a text editor opens. All right, a desktop graphic adventure game by Jason Smart. I just learned that this was the name of the author like in the last few days. <laughs> all the time I spent playing this when I was younger, I didn't care about things like that. I just wanted to play the game. Uh, is shareware of some sort? Um, good luck contacting him, but I mean, you could try if you want. Uh, Explorer program runs scenarios created with the Game Maker GS program, uh, which is also included with it. So this is very much a level editor and a level player, uh, and that's kind of a core part of it. A lot of what we'll be playing is like player-made scenarios. Um, I'm going to start with an official one that I've actually never played, so I just basically know this as like a game engine that other people make stuff in, or that I make stuff in, and you can play with it. But there were a few scenarios distributed with the game that, I don't know, that I've never seen, so this is going to be new for me. I provided three scenarios. Lyle Valley. This is a small, easy scenario meant for beginners. Play this one first. Islands. Find the rocky island to defeat the wyverns in their lair. Nor Forest. A much larger scenario. Defeat the demon, find the hidden scepter, many hidden rooms and passages. All right, cool. Although explorer scenarios can be as different as your imagination, they all have one thing in common. To win the scenario, a specific object must be found. The winning items are the crown, golden shield, scepter, and necklace. When one of these is discovered, the scenario has been won, and the character receives a lot of experience. Uh, so by the way, characters in this game are separate from scenarios and carry their stats over. So basically, I would make a character and play a scenario with it, then they would get some experience and I could potentially level up with that and take that same character in their leveled up state to another scenario. This can get a bit grindy, so I might be doing some things to skip the grind, uh, but we'll kind of see how it plays out. The overall layout of the scenario is divided up into rooms. Each room has access to other rooms. The auto mapping feature shows the room's location and the overall layout. This will make more sense when we see it. Uh, experience points, character stats, uh, how to operate the program, how to operate the program, etc. Don't worry about this. What the game looks like, we'll see that in a moment. Auto mapping, sure. All right, what are the important parts here? Controls keypad. Um, I played this for a fair bit of time before I knew you could move diagonally. That is an important aspect of it. Uh, so I can attack. My character has a specified range. So do enemies. There's something about alignment here that I haven't done much with. Maybe I'll learn more about it as we get into this. I can do a more powerful attack that uses some MP. Spell points, as they call them here. I can talk. So there's freeform text in here. And there's specific characters I need to talk to in order to level up. Uh, 
you'll see what a warrior or mauler is and a wizard and what is it warlock uh evil people and creatures never have anything to say so don't bother talking to them this is actually false uh sometimes you do want to talk to your enemies i guess i can assume you don't do that in lyle valley though uh right alignment stuff i'll go over those when we get to them disarm trap traps are a big part of this heal look stairs cast description of spells spells are important doors and get items okay I think that might be all we strictly need to see in here. Maybe not. The goal is to get a winning item, but there are many obstacles, traps, locked doors, monsters, riddles, hidden entrance ways, even solid walls. Uh, strategy and thought. There are secret passages. Right, save character, what I just talked about there. What carries over, what doesn't. There are boats. Uh... Just as in the real world, creatures and explorer can be both good and evil. <laughs> That's a take. Uh, quizzer, right, that is important, but it's best like seen in action rather than described here. Some creatures are flying, which affects what they can go over. There are stats, they do things. Uh, right, and some background information about the author and how this game was written. Written last summer. Plan to make changes. Faster binary format. Yeah, so the scenarios are a text format, which helped for reverse engineering some stuff I needed to do. Uh, okay, I think we're good here. All right. Here's some really, really old contact info that I'm sure does not work anymore. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to quit this. Non-multitasking operating system restarts its file browser. And I want Explorer GS open. So um, characters, uh, I've already created myself a character that I want to be using here. I have to do that in the level editor or use one of the preloaded characters that was available here. Uh, okay, I'm going to do some file browsing. So here in characters. So I was a young boy when I first played this, but now I'm an old man, so I want to play an old man. <laughs> That's what I've decided. Actually, let's show the character creator real quick. This won't take too long, just so you can see what it's about. Uh, I am going to use the one I created, but here's how I created him. So here in the Game Maker folder, which is separate. <laughs> I like that little black loading screen there, yeah. Uh, GSOS was an interesting sort of thing. So I can make a new character here. Choose from several different types. Uh, it just shows the icons, but these all have different starting stats and stuff. So I chose the old man here, uh, who has decent wisdom, but not great strength, not great range, slow speed. Uh, so my stats, my starting stats are not great. I rerolled this until I got... A non, you know, a, a little bit of strength, a little bit of range, and decent wisdom. Wisdom's important for spell casting. I'm going to do stuff with spells. They're kind of a big part of the game that I don't really get access to if I start with uh, a character with low wisdom. So we're going to start with one that has some. That's the stat I've chosen as the important one. Okay, so uh, into the game. Explorer GS. So right, you boot this up, doesn't really do anything at first. Uh, have to load a character and load a scenario, and then we can play. So load character. I want old man. And right, some of these are the pre-shipped characters that you can just start with. I played around with Colin a little bit. He did fine, he's an archer, but this is gonna be my character. Load game. Gotta do some file browsing here. Scenarios are in here. I have a whole bunch here. I want Lyle Valley. So I kind of want to play all of these scenarios. I have like 50 of them. This is quite a project, but you know, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Anyway, here's the game. Lyle Valley. That's me there. 
Uh, each room has a title, and there's people, they move around. This is healing, this is SP restoration. Let's talk. Watch out for the skeletons in the east. Welcome to the world of Explorer, and... Oh, already? Okay, so I took this character through um, a scenario. This is the character, this is a warrior. Uh, he levels me up if I talk to him, if I'm ready for advancement. Otherwise, he says, not ready for advancement. All right, so I've already leveled up once. Uh, my stats are that. Level two. Uh, okay. Good to know. Right, so my HP max actually went up a little bit when I did that, so I'm going to heal again. And yeah, I can look at objects by clicking on them or by using look command. That's a fountain. That's a zap recharger. This is a tree. So is that. Those are mountains. Okay, let's go. And right commands. I can attack in a direction. It shoots a little projectile thing. My range is pretty low, so it only goes that far. Just two tiles. Some skeletons. Skeletons to fight. If I tried to talk to these, they would say no comment. And that's the default message. So this is comment. Uh, com this is combat. I attack, they attack. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's a little more that I can do. I can cast some spells. I can, uh, I can use the zap command for a stronger attack if I want to spend my SP. Skeletons aren't too serious, though. I'll kind of learn to recognize which, uh, which monsters are serious when, uh, just by their sprite. So right, hidden passages here. Here's some money. And here's a key, very important. So yeah, there's, um, mm, there would potentially be ways, other ways to reach this stuff than going through a hidden passage here, but yeah, like that, I can click on it and inspect it. Like I can see here that this is a hidden passage. And when I step in it, it turns into that sprite, uh, but other stuff, like if I try to go west from here, that's blocked. These are actual mountains. But yeah, if I see something like this hidden in a room, that probably means there's a hidden passage going in there. There could be hidden passages going to other rooms down here. At times, I'm sure I'll be clicking the room edges to search for passages and stuff to find them. This is about as much of this scenario as I've seen. I did a test run. Oh, right, by the way, going kind of fast here. <laughs> Reflex. So that's a trap. I can't. It blocks my way until I disarm it. And because my character has low dexterity, disarming the trap to the east... Okay, that one actually didn't damage me. It will usually damage me to disarm. That's a fairy. This game spells fairy kind of weird. Fairy says, I can fly over the lava. If I had created a fairy type character, then I could do that too without getting hurt. If I step on it, about 10 damage. Let's go down these stairs. An ancient hidden cave with a... apparently that's a sloth. So claims the game. If I zap, it does that screen effect and does more damage. So I hit for eight, I hit for seven. There's some damage randomization, but the zap on average does more. Okay, so that sloth kind of wrecked me a bit. I got a blue key though. Haven't actually opened a door yet. But I do have two keys, which will show up in my... Okay, that game didn't like that. Uh, ignore that Windows beep sound. That's not part of the GSOS here. <laughs> All right. So I got blue key and onyx key. Uh, hit con 31. Hit points 85. So this is health max. This is health current. Let's cast a spell. Since I'm here next to a zap recharger. So I got heal, disarm trap, fireball, force field, on off. Let's cast heal. Cost 20 SP and gave me that much health. Let's do it again. All right, I'm full, great. So availability of spells uh, is determined by the amount of MP I have, SP. I'm just gonna call it MP usually. These are, oops, these are bones. Those are bookshelves. Neither does anything special. Actually the bones do. There's a spell that can interact with them, but I don't currently have it. All right, don't think I've ever seen this screen. A wizard and a statue. That's the wizard. That's the statue. A uh, wizard is like the um, the warrior back there and will raise my spell points if I'm ready, but I'm not ready for spell points. 
So that's a special character that I need to need to talk to to get stuff done. All right, so I used my Onyx key. It doesn't get used up, just once I have a key in a scenario, it stays with me for the rest of that scenario. Boy, how do you get across? On a boat, of course. So boat kind of replaces the character sprite while I'm in it, and now I'm here. Okay, so here's something that I can do. So force field would normally block my way, like this lake does. Uh, but since I have 80 SP, I can cast the force field on off spell in this direction, which gives me access to a zap recharger here. And I believe I can also create a force field with that spell. Yep, I just put one there. Okay, there we go. So, uh, that's an obstacle that can only be passed when I, uh, when I have the appropriate spell. Okay, and I, <laughs> I'm picking up on something here. Uh, okay, so several things going on. Here's a blob. Blob is kind of a serious opponent. I think I'm gonna, okay, so you say no comment, you attack me. I'm gonna take this opportunity to cast a fireball. Let's see how that works. It didn't tell me how much damage it did. Okay, Blob is dead. I'll take it. So you are Archer. Uh, this is a Quizzer. So hang on. First, let me... Okay, there are... Uh, so there are invisible traps. Forest floor, forest floor, spikes. If I were to leave this room and come back, or in another way cause the, the, uh, the screen to be repainted, this would have re-hidden itself, but I can click and see. Spikes. Uh, ways to detect these. Walk over them and take damage like I did. Attack to the tile. Click the tile and see that it says spikes. Uh, there might be others. So here's a fountain. So right, I can disarm these so I can walk over that uh, tile safely. All right, so here's a quizzer. If I talk to this thing, name this valley. So it wants a password, basically. There's a, there's a fixed string that I have to input here uh, before it will let me pass. So if I just say Lyle, that's good enough. That was the keyword. So quizzer disappears and I can pass. Hmm, check the bottom left of this room. So that's my clue. My other clue is that this wall looks a bit different. Uh, sometimes there are tells about where hidden passages are. There's an algorithm that decides what type of wall will fill in the uh, the hidden passage because it just automatically takes on the appearance of something around it. The algorithm has decided that this, the marble wall, takes precedence over the mountains, which is weird because there are two mountains next to it, but only one marble wall. I don't know how the algorithm works, but it has given me a clue here. And so has the archer. So, a hidden city. There's money. Money functions similarly to, um, so right, there are these things called money mongers, I think, uh, which require a certain amount of money in them. The chests always have randomized amounts in them, so I think if you get bad rolls, you might get stuck in the game. Uh, monsters can also drop it, but anyway, a money monger can block progress the same way a quizzer can, which is just a check on how much money you have. You have to pay them to go away. I have 160. However, this is the goal object. It looks like we're already done with the scenario. So I'm going to talk to you if I can. I will be the princess someday. All right. Um, this is a magic floor, which has some effects that don't come into play yet, but mostly it makes the screen flash blue. All right, I'm going to pick this up. Uh, hold on, not yet. Uh, this is golden shield. Get. All right, and the scenario is one. My character gained some experience. I uh, got 144. I think experience is spent when I talk to the warrior to level up. Uh, I believe I could press play here and it would continue from where I left off with goal object obtained, but I just kind of want to do this to talk to the warrior again. Not ready for advancement, got it, okay. Uh, yeah, let me see if things are still in the state that I left them. It works, yeah, okay, so this is looted. I already got the key and the uh, the money. It works the same if I die. I can just press play again to continue from the start. Um, 
with everything still in the same state. All right, so that is uh, the first scenario. Tiny little thing, just for completeness. So I'm going to save my character. So that'll save the changes to this character to disk. So old man, next time I load him, will still be at level two and will have 144 experience. I think it's 200 experience per level up. That's what the documentation said. So I get a little bit more and I can level up again and my stats will increase slowly. Oh, stats only increase once every four levels though. Ooh, this stat growth is going to be slow. All right, well, I'll have to deal with it somehow. So just out of curiosity, let's quit GameMaker GS. No, sorry, that was Explorer GS. Let's open GameMaker GS. And let's open up Lyle Valley in the level editor and see if we missed anything or if that was actually the whole thing. I think that was the whole thing, but I want to know. Explorer files, scenarios, Lyle Valley. Does this weird little thing with characters here. This is kind of meaningful. So this is the start point. Um, if I look at... Okay, right, so first room here uh, has people in it. Let's see, how do I... So if I just click you... Okay, I erased you by accident. Oops. Um, well, <laughs> I won't save this. Uh, I think if I, if I select the type that you are and then click, then I can edit your... No comment. Well, never mind. I thought there was a way to look at what character dialogue was, but apparently I'm just replacing I don't know what this is okay this is the map yeah okay each of these rooms corresponds to a different symbol and it looks like that was the entire thing there are very few rooms here there are different floors there is something down a floor right of course because there was one stairway down yeah so this Lyle Valley is a total one two three four five six seven eight rooms. All right, tiny little thing. Not too much to it. Uh, okay, so skeletons are placed there, hidden passages. So yeah, the uh, the editor looks very similar to the, the actual game. Slow repainting it all. Oh, okay, that's the, uh, that's the symbol of the room that I'm in. Got it. Uh, there's a reason there are ASCII symbols for that. Um, I'll talk about those reasons later when they come up. All right, cool. So that was Lyle Valley, prescribed as the first scenario in uh, to play in Explorer. There's going to be a whole bunch more. So yeah, I want to get through all the scenarios I have, which is like 50-ish. Some of them are extremely good, a lot of them are not. This is mostly user-generated content, which comes with all of the uh, ups and downs of that. But yeah, some of the ups are pretty good. All right, I'll see you again for another scenario. No, please don't save those changes, since I accidentally deleted some, uh, some characters from there. And yeah, this is going to be a fun little trip into my past, dimly remembered memories from long ago, because I barely have touched this game in the last... 20 plus years. Anyway, I'll see you next time.